Here we go. Oh man, okay, hmm. Today we are doing a hands-on comparison of channel lock versus Knipex. And we're also gonna throw in a couple of other interesting ones like these Klein tools right here that are kind of an interesting design. The reason we're taking apart all these fittings is that we're gonna be using some of them for my gas line going to my grill and griddle. We're gonna be connecting them to my home propane system. But Channel Lock, for those of you guys who don't know, is kind of the classic brand when it comes to an adjustable pliers like this. And there are many companies that have copied it since then, and that's why the name Channel Lock is kind of what these are always referred to, no matter what brand they are. They're like the Kleenex of uh, this type of tool where everything is called channel lock even if it's not. You'll notice that we actually have two different types of channel locks here and that's because the jaw design is different on this one versus this one. This one seems to be a little bit more similar to the Cobras so it's going to be interesting to kind of feel if these ones are an improvement over these ones. We won't be using any of the classic channel locks with the flat jaw uh, because those just don't work for pipe in general. The progression we're going to go through is we're going to start with this pair of channel locks right here. Uh, these have a little bit more of a classic tooth design. If you look right here, you can see that these are pointed uh, to a sharp point, but they are not really angled in any particular direction. So there's no really direction where these would prefer. So we'll start with these, and then we're gonna move on to these ones right here. You can see this is a, a an improved jaw design where you can actually see that there's an angle that these are set to that is going to try to bite into that pipe as we tighten it. And then finally we'll do the Cobras, and these things have been in my tool belt for a couple years. All right, let's uh, get positioned and let's see how these things feel. We'll take our channel locks, literally channel locks in this case, and we're gonna adjust those to the closest possible setting to get a good grip on that half inch black iron. And this setting right here seems like it's about right. Now we'll adjust our other one to match our cap right here. Get a hold of that. And right here. I'm kind of curious how this is going to go because these things are sometimes very difficult to disassemble. Okay. <laughs> so I'm just slip, slipping right away here. It's just not really biting in. You can see how much is scraping into that metal. I'm going to see if I can tighten these one more click. That's one of the downsides to the channel lock is you don't have as much adjustability as you do with uh, some of the other designs. So now I've got a little bit more to work with to get a hold of this. Oh, I got it. I did get it. Okay, sweet. I was a little worried there for a second that it wasn't even going to go. So no problem. We really didn't have any issue with that. Uh, however, I had to squeeze pretty hard in order to get it to bite into that half inch black iron. Now we'll upgrade to the next version of the channel lock. Similar design, except for the improved teeth like we already discussed. Let's go ahead and try to get this set to the right size. So this is gonna be on the black iron, and this side's gonna go on our T fitting. Just like that. All right, oh wow, okay, I can already, okay, that was a really easy fitting to do, but I could feel that it bit in really nicely and it wasn't I wasn't even having to hardly squeeze as it removed that fitting. We're gonna do another one because that one seemed a little too easy. It's one of the things I love about black iron is that you can reuse it many times. Alright let's try this one right here. Man it just feels really good. It just bites in very very aggressively. One thing that's kind of interesting is that once you get a good bite into the pipe, you almost don't even have to squeeze with this jaw design. So I can pretty much just pull up on the on the one side of this. So I'm squeezing a little bit right now, but let me see if I can do this. I'm pulling on just the one handle. Oh, come on! Oh, holy buckets! That's really tight. I got it! I got it to go! So I was pretty much just squeezing the the bottom, or just pulling on the bottom of it, like this, and it's working. So that's really impressive. So this jaw design is great, and they're biting in even better than I expected them to. Slick, slick. 
Okay, I am pretty impressed. That was actually a pretty good experience overall. Okay, let's move on to the Knipex. I'm finally starting to remember not to call it Nipex. That's been a battle, let me tell you. All right, so one awesome thing about the Knipex right away. Now they do make a design where it adjusts more similarly to this in increments. Uh, but with these, you have like infinite adjustability, like really significant adjustability. I also think that the opening on these is the widest if we compare the three. So definitely a lot wider than that one. And we'll check the first one that we did. Okay, that one's pretty comparable, but it's, it appears that the Knipex is just a little bit, a little bit wider. Things to keep in mind. But yeah, your adjustability is very, very granular. You can pretty much stop it anywhere along the way. And the nice thing about that is that you can set this to be at the perfect point to where you can really get a nice grip on the handle and it's comfortable. Like this is almost a little bit far apart. Let me uh, just adjust it one more click right there. Now look at how nicely this is in my hand. Uh, I'm not having to stretch out my hand farther than is comfortable and I can just get a super nice grip on that. We'll do the same thing with the opposite side. Right there. That is ultra, ultra comfortable for my hands. We'll do the same thing we did with the channel locks and I'm just gonna push on the opposite handles. I haven't even really allowed it to bite in very much yet. And let's just see if it's able to do it. Oh yeah. <laughs> no problem. Now that fitting was not very tight. But it's still impressive that you, you hardly have to squeeze the handles at all. Let's try this guy with the Knipex because that one was pretty easy. This posture that I'm in right now with uh, this wrench on top, another wrench on the bottom, and sticking the backside of this into my thigh or leg allows me to have a really comfortable position where I can push really hard while freehanding the fitting. Oh boy, yeah, okay. That one was much more similar to the, the second one that we did with the, with the channel lock. But no problem, not even a challenge. Gripped right into it, didn't have to squeeze very hard. I was squeezing more just because it made it more comfortable than anything else. So that was awesome, wow. Moving on to the other types of wrenches I wanted to mention quick. Uh, these right here, this is the Nipex pliers wrench and these things are awesome. Uh, again, really adjustable and they make these in multiple different sizes. I will link them in the description. Uh, the thing that these are really useful for is adjusting anything that you really don't want to mar up. Uh, whenever you're working on like plumbing fittings, like finished plumbing, uh, you do not really want to leave just giant gouges in all of the fittings that you're working on. So these are perfect for that and they just are very comfortable and work extremely well. Uh, whereas if you use something like this or any of the other ones we've already been looking at, these teeth are so aggressive, they leave giant marks in whatever thing that you're trying to get a hold of. Obviously trying to get a hold of a pipe like this and get any sort of uh, progress is pretty much impossible, which is really interesting because uh, Klein Tools was like, hey, let's make a pliers wrench copy or whatever you want to call it, but we're going to put an added feature that allows it to work with pipe. And that is this little chin right here underneath this jaw. If we take this and adjust it all the way down, like this, we can actually pull this right off, flip it around and slide it up just like that. Now we are able to get a hold of a smooth piece of pipe and turn it. So we're gonna try these and kind of throw them into the comparison. These do have a nice fine adjustment so we can pretty much set it to whatever size we need. It also has little markings right here on the side that tell you what size you're at. I'm, assu I'm assuming that's for the flat jaw side, obviously. But here we go. This one's gonna go here. I think I already got it set. I gotta go a little tighter. Right there, that feels great. Another cool feature of these is that you don't have to reach up as high 
as you do on the Knipex, the button's all the way up here. Whereas this one, they figured out a way to move the button down on the handle a little bit, which gives you a little bit nicer experience when adjusting the exact size. All right, we're gonna try to do the same thing like we did with the others and let go of the opposite handle. I'll give it a little squeeze and kind of let those teeth get set a little bit. And then we're just gonna push and see if, uh, see if it falls off or not. Definitely fell off. It's also interesting the way that the teeth are when I'm pushing it down like this in order to attempt to remove this. It is wanting to slip off that slippery part of the jaw. And it seems like if there was a way to have it be the opposite, like if we could flip this around, which it's not going to work because the teeth are not designed to be as aggressive in that direction, but let's just try it anyway. We're going to flip these both around so that as I tighten it, the wrench wants to stay on the pipe instead of pop off the pipe. So let's just see what happens here. Okay, it definitely doesn't feel right. I'm going to have to squeeze pretty hard. Let's just see if it works though. Oh no, there's absolutely no way. That does not work. Okay, let's go back to the way we were, were supposed to do it. And I'm gonna have to squeeze this time. Here we go. Oh man, okay, hmm. You know what? I think this might be a miss. No, it's just rolling off, especially on the pipe side. It's just like rolling right off of the pipe. I'll try it one more time. Okay, I did get it, I got it. Oh, but look, see how it's popping off? Oof -da. So, I like the fact that it has the ability to do this. However, it is definitely, definitely not a replacement for something like this or this. The other downside to these having this little uh, jaw protrusion here on the bottom is that it makes it a little bit less compact when you're trying to get into a tight space. So overall, these are decent. Uh, however, compared to the original Nipex pliers wrench, uh, these definitely win out. Uh, but you can check the prices. Uh, if this one's significantly cheaper, uh, like half price of this one, then I might consider going for it. And once in a while, that extra feature might be worthwhile, but definitely is not anywhere close to having a legit adjustable plier. Out of all these wrenches, if I had to purchase just one set, it would by far be the Nipex Cobras. However, these are a close second. I would definitely skip these since they don't have the more aggressive teeth. Uh, these right here, ah oh man, I really wanted to like them, but they are not as good as I thought they were gonna be. So I think if you were gonna consider a, a plier's wrench, you'd be better off going with the actual Knipex instead of that one. I believe the set of these two is about the same price as this one right here, but you can check the links in the description. I'm definitely biased, I think, towards the Knipex uh, because this is what my dad had me go get out of his tool belt. He's like, go get me the channel locks, the red handled channel locks is what he always called it. If you are going to be using them not super frequently, this is probably a really, really solid option, although it doesn't go quite as big. And sometimes that extra distance really can be important. Right here is the next video that you guys should watch. We're going to be using these fittings that we just disassembled in order to connect a gas line, dedicated gas line to my gas grill and my gas griddle to my home propane system. It's gonna be awesome. We'll see you over there. We are cooking hot dogs and marshmallows for lunch. I cooked them in a little bit of bacon grease and they're super, I'm pretty sure they're 100% beef. So. Hey, oh, we're standing on a hot pad. How many marshmallows did you eat so far? Um, two.